Fraud is on the rise and we do not talk about it enough. So here's a whole video dedicated about fraud. We're going to talk about the three most common types of fraud that's happening right now in our industry that we're all getting affected by. So you company drivers, yes, you're getting affected by this. Owner operators, you guys are getting affected by this. And small fleet owners, you guys are also getting affected by this. So we'll start off with double brokering. We'll talk about identity theft and we'll talk about phishing emails with every single one of these these points I'm gonna tell you about stuff that has happened in our company and how we got frauded from these three different types of scenarios so double brokering is when a carrier or someone posing as one accepts a load from a broker and then instead of doing the work themselves ends up selling it to a third party again which is called double brokering now the broker the original broker doesn't know that this is happening in the background while the carrier or someone posing as being a carrier ends up selling the work to a third party it's probably the most widespread scam in our industry and double brokering is always on the rise when we are in a recession or when the trucking industry is not doing too well which is our time right now I mean it's hard enough as it is and now all this double brokering stuff is happening my god all right so how can you prevent something like this so first I'll talk about a couple of scenarios that have happened in our office okay and this is of recent so you know how when you're calling when you're on DAT and you're calling on posted load they do a great job vetting the carriers that are up there what I don't think that they can prevent is having somebody pretend that they're a carrier up there so a lot of the times what happens is where the fraud happens is when somebody calls into your office and says hi I'm calling from ABC logistics now you have an account with ABC logistics because they're fairly big now an email is gonna come in from ABC logistics one two three at gmail.com or a hotmail.com and they will send you a confirmation but it's not the actual broker that's giving you this load it's a fraudulent load now you right away will put it in your CRM as ABC Logistics because you have an account with ABC Logistics. You'll do the pickup, you'll do the delivery, but only then will you find out that this was a double brokered load or this is complete fraud. I mean, this isn't even double brokered load. This is 100% fraud and it has happened. Most of the times it happens when people are calling into the office. When I'm calling outbound, I know I'm calling, you know, TQL or I know I'm calling CH Robinson because I'm clicking because I have to click the dial system, right? So I click and right away the phone rings and it goes to their automated message and then I have an extension and I call that extension but when they're calling me on the inbound that's when the fraud can take place or somebody posing to be somebody else so they pretend like they're TQL they pretend like you're their CH Robinson now I don't think the fraud happens with TQL and CH Robinson it's more of the medium-sized brokerages but when somebody calls me to this office and says hey I'm calling from ABC brokerage which I have an account with they're like oh yeah it might be just a different division so I don't recognize the voice I never recognize anybody's voice because because there's so many brokers within an organization and then when the confirmation comes they are so advanced that the confirmation even looks identical to the actual brokers confirmation why because they have been in on it for a very long time and they've been doing this over and over again but the fraud is getting worse and worse out there so you really want to make sure that the email that you're receiving the confirmation from is actually that brokerage firm now the next thing that you can do to prevent is you can actually with every confirmation that you get into the office you actually want to call that brokerage and you want to call you want to email the person at the ending of the brokerage firm so we'll take CH Robinson or TQL because they are very very large companies so you want to make sure that it's whatever the person's name at TQL or something that ends in TQL or CH Robinson now if it's Gmail or Hotmail even though it says TQL at the beginning at Gmail or Hotmail that is a fraudulent transaction okay so that's how you're going to prevent yourself from people calling into the office and doing fraudulent loads now double brokering I mean the way you can prevent it honestly is when the driver is at the pickup location there's a bill of lading driver receives a bill of lading now if ABC brokerage it gave you that load ABC brokerage should be on that paperwork and if it's not ABC brokerage and it's TQL then you know that somehow a TQL gave it to somebody else that somebody else gave it to you or it could be going down two or three hands so make sure that you check on the bill of lading that the brokerage name is on that bill of lading or you are the carrier you should be there okay now honestly it doesn't hurt to call T if you see that TQL is on the paperwork or if you see that you know this brokerage firm is on the paperwork and it's not the broker that gave you the load you know what just call and find out just say hey listen I received this and this load from this and this company I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of this that you know this is not double brokered shipment you know a lot of the times you're going to bring it up to their attention something that they never knew and they will find out that it has gone over two or three hands before it came to you all right guys so I'm gonna share two links with you guys 
guys out there, okay, that DAT provided me. So DAT.com forward slash fraud protection. And I'm going to put this link below. And I'm also going to put another link below about reporting a bad player. So if you see that somebody's posting a load and you see that this stuff is double brokered, I highly recommend that you use that link and report a bad player that you know is double brokering stuff because it's against their policies. All right, the next topic we're going to talk about is phishing emails. And my God, is this getting popular in our office? I mean, whoever these people are, they obviously know my name. They know a lot of employees inside this office. They have a lot of information. Now, what they do sometimes is they open up a Gmail account or a Hotmail account and they open up my name and dot last name one, two, three at gmail.com. And they will send one of my employees an email asking them to do something or buying a Google Play card. Or there's a lot of things that have happened over the last five years. A couple of funny things, but they're actually sad that have happened that I'd love to share with you guys. So just I mean, be aware of these phishing emails. So a story that happened here in our office is somebody gives our safety manager a call and says, hey, a safety manager, he knew his name. My name is Officer 123. Your truck is here in Des Moines, Iowa, and there's a huge spill. You know, he hit something and there's a huge spill on the highway. Now, safety manager says, OK, uh, he goes, I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, give me a few minutes. I'll give you a call back. You know, we've blocked off the roads. We've closed it off. There's a spill here. All of a sudden, the safety manager, he knows that, oh, my God, there's a spill. This is a hundred thousand dollar claim. No matter what you do, officer tells him on the phone. Listen, you know, there's a local company over here that can uh, clean this up fairly quick, quickly. I prefer to do it faster because I don't. That, that means that I don't have to do all this paperwork that's involved in it. But I'll call you back with information in a bit. So safety manager sweating buckets. He doesn't know what he's going to do. How he's going to tell his superiors? How he's going to tell us? You know that there's a spill in Des Moines, Iowa. You know, safety manager took down the badge number. He took down the drivers, the unit number, the trailer goes on the satellite tracking. He sees, yep, this truck, this trailer, it's in Des Moines. Iowa. Now, also, there's a badge number. So we quickly Google Des Moines, Iowa badge number. There's boom. He sees officer, whatever his name was. Everything seems legit. So then the officer gives the safety manager a call. He says, listen, we have everything under control. Don't worry about it. You can either run it through the insurance policy or whatever, or there's a local company here. They're going to cost about forty seven hundred dollars. I got a quote for you to clean it everything up. And uh, and this way you'll save me from doing the paperwork. And, you know, I won't get in trouble and, either, and hopefully you won't get in trouble either. Safety manager says, sir, no problem. Where do I give the credit card number? Officer goes to him, listen, somebody's going to call you from that company. I don't get involved in payments. You know, it's not my thing. And he hears the radio in the background. He hears the walkie talkie, so everything, the, the sirens in the background. Everything seems legit. Now there's another company that gives him a call. Hey, how are you? I'm from ABC Cleaners. You know, we do. We specialize in spills. We're here on site. We need your go ahead and we need a forty five hundred dollar T check. Now, T checks are irreversible. The second you give that number away, you're done. That thing is cashed and you're finished. Now, safety manager wants to look like a hero. What does he do? He gives away the T check number number and gives a payment for $4,500, right? He didn't run, run it up the uh, up the ladder. He saw that the truck was there. You know, he did what he was supposed to do, right? Well, maybe not what he was supposed to do. Anyways, long story short, gives away a T-check, $4,500. Police officer gives him a call and says, everything's fine. You know, we're done. Your truck is good to go. Okay, great. Now, all of a sudden, the safety manager wants to look like a hero, brings it up to our attention. To listen, this and this happened. You know, he tells the whole story of what happened. The officer calls him about the spill, about this. The first thing that went into my mind mind is, did you call the driver? And he goes, no, I didn't call the driver. So why didn't you call the driver? Because listen, there was a police there. There was things on site. You know, I, I, I didn't want to. He was probably dealing with a spill. He was in a shitty mood. And I told him, did you call the driver? And he says, no. I said, call the driver. Anyway, safety manager calls the driver. Driver says, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What spill are you talking about? L long story short, you know, they were all in on it. They obviously knew the information from Google that when you're going to search, that you're going to stumble upon this badge number with this officer number. There was a cleanup crew really called ABC cleanup that would come up on Google. And yes, the truck and trailer were in Des Moines, Iowa, which means they knew from the truck stop that he's in this in this location. So $4,500 went out the drain. Who's supposed to pay for the bill? Safety manager or the trucking company? I don't know. Why don't you leave the comments in below? You know, would you would you take it out of the safety manager's salary for making that decision by himself? I mean, can he make this decision by himself? You guys be the judge of that one. So how do we avoid this? We avoid this by creating awareness that we all know that these things exist exist and these things happen. We should all be made aware of these scenarios because tomorrow you might be in this situation. Whether you're a driver, an owner operator, lease operator, small fleet owner, owner operator, you know, that has multiple, you know, a small fleet owner that has three or four trucks, the same thing could be happening to you. So by creating awareness, we can avoid these things from happening to other people. All right. And the last thing we're going to talk about is cargo theft. I mean, this is on the rise. And I've done, I think, a recent video of a, a 
bust, about $10 million bust here in the GTA. I know it's happening all over the US. And if you're ever wondering why our insurance premiums are so high, this is the reason. I mean, theft after theft after theft. There's so much theft happening. Cargo thefts, trailer thefts, truck thefts. I mean, there is so much theft that's happening and not enough policies in place, not enough we're doing with the criminals. We are not putting them away for a long period of time. Really, it's just a slap on the wrist, you know, and the cargo thefts. I mean, yes, I can tell you a story about what, ha what happened to us. I mean, we are lucky that here in Concord, we are right beside a police station. So here in our facility, it doesn't happen a lot. We do have a location in Brampton, Ontario, and constantly once a month once every second month somebody's going to cut the chain cut the fence and they go into two or three of our trailers luckily for us we have a policy in place that we do not leave loaded trailers in brampton ontario so every time they go inside they cut the fence they open the trailers and they see that they are empty so they leave us alone but i can assure you that if they saw a trailer that's worthwhile stealing they would take it in a second and they would not get caught and they would basically just get away with it and that's why these things continue to happen there are not enough measures in place there's not enough security in place there's not enough you know people going over the footage there's not enough put in place to catch these people but cargo theft is on the rise now one more story i'm going to share with you and this happens and i've heard about it because a manufacturing plant gave us a call and let us know so maybe just to create more awareness out there so there was a lumber company a little bit up north in the gta two and a half hours north of here from the greater toronto area they produce lumber what happened was that somebody hacked fish through phishing emails or through previous loads they were able to a fake customer placed an order from a real customer's account so there was a customer in the US and the manufacturing plant the customer placed an order through phishing emails who placed an order for two truckloads of lumber okay of plywood to be exact now the manufacturing company has an account with the buyer so what do they do they basically they put the purchase order through a trucking company came to pick up two loads of lumber they were worth $75,000 each the truck fake I mean the trucking company somebody probably double broker triple broker this freight so a trucking company that has absolutely no idea what's going on picks up the load and delivers it to a local warehouse two loads of lumber of plywood now obviously this was a fraudulent transaction cargo basically gets stolen from the warehouse i'm sure it went somebody else they'll never be able to track where it went now all of a sudden the customer gets the bill for two trailers of plywood okay the customer says i don't know what you're talking about we never ordered he's like sure you did here's the email well guess what bob went two three at gmail.com doesn't work so who messed up obviously the phishing emails that went through yes it was bob's email with his name and his last name and an identical signature because i feel like people are monitoring emails but they can catch this information from phishing emails and they can see who the buyer is they can see who the seller is and this is the kind of stuff that is happening right now in our industry now dat is doing a great job at creating awareness why because they've sponsored this video so obviously they're trying to put a lot of awareness out there of what's happening in these load boards it doesn't necessarily mean that it's their fault okay the fraud that's happening on these load boards i mean if you are not reporting it properly they won't know about it and they can't do something about it a lot of times double brokered stuff people are not making them aware and in the subject line you kind of need to put urgency and you kind of need to put what's happening or double brokered fraudulent transaction in the subject line i can assure you that those emails will get picked up a lot more than you know brokered load or double brokered load you gotta put an emphasis in the subject line to create awareness so make sure that you're making that email okay you gotta make it sound urgent because it is urgent because if you got defrauded and if somebody double brokered something to you i can assure you that they're doing it to other people also so you want to stop that from happening and guys keep in mind that dat is on our side they're here to help us and that's why they're putting these articles and that's why they're doing these links and that's and that's why they're sponsoring these videos to create awareness to make sure that this doesn't happen on their platforms all right guys so i'm going to share two links with you guys out there okay that dat provided me so dat.com forward slash fraud protection and i'm going to put this link below and i'm also going to put another link below about reporting a bad player so if you see that somebody's posting a load and you see that the stuff is double brokered i highly recommend that you use that link and report a bad player that you know is double brokering stuff because it's against their policies so guys bring it to their attention make them aware so they can ban these guys from their platforms okay i'm ronan peace out